What's up, Stogie Geeks listeners? Joe Zemper here, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood, a.k.a. The Italian Stanley, telling you about a little giveaway that we have going on. We've teamed up with our sponsor, J.C. Newman, this year to give back to the Stogie Geeks listener. They've been such an awesome partner so far. They've decided to give away one Diamond Crown humidor per quarter to the winner that they choose. All you got to do is log on to stogiegeeks.com forward slash Diamond Crown. Click on the enter to win button. It's really that easy. So if you're smart and you want an awesome humidor for your home collection, go to our website, stogiegeeks.com. Find that banner ad right on top. Click on it and register to win that humidor. Good luck. Welcome back to episode 307 of Story Geeks. This is the second segment where Drew and I have the opportunity to talk about what we have been smoking, and it's our sticks of the week. If you're just tuning in on the live stream, you're about an hour and 10 minutes too late, but that's okay. It'll be posted. <laughs> It'll be posted by Monday, so you can always check out all the episodes and previous episodes. All you have to do is go to stogiegeeks.com. And if you want to email me, it's joeh at stogiegeeks.com. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle, as they say in the industry, is Joe Hosempa. So J-O-E-H-O-Z-E-M-P-A. Or if you throw me into Google, you can find me on all those social media stuff. Uh, I am right here in G-Unit Studios in Warwick, Rhode Island, sipping some Cabernet Sauvignon and uh, a Monte Cristo number two. Uh, beautiful pairing, by the way, uh, for sure. And remote via Zoom is our super awesome new edition, Drew, out there in Texas. Hey, what's going on, guys? So my Instagram page, just want to let you guys know, it's Drew Galvin Cigars. If you guys want to uh, follow me, definitely follow me there. Uh, and on Facebook, Drew Galvin uh, Proceeds Cigars. Yep, so. and Drew posts a lot of good industry news uh, throughout the week. Uh, he's a little bit more on top of that. As mm-hmm. I am, as you know, uh, Drew is chasing his grandson, and I am chasing my son. So, <laughs> so Drew has a little bit more bandwidth than I do. I got a one-year-old. Oh man, it's super cool. I love it. So, uh, anyway, Drew, what have you been smoking? So this week, I I'm gonna just go through my list real quick, and then we can just go back down. So I got the J.C. Newman, the American. Ooh. Sent- Sent to me by a friend of mine in Florida, so I got got my hands on a couple of those. Uh, the, the next one we're going to do is the Vegas Five Limitada 2019, Ooh. and then we got the M Bourbon by Macanudo. Okay, and then we have a Culture Colt Fuerte, uh, and then to close it off, I got the Drew Estate Fat Bottom Betty. So I have oh, two flavors. Of, yeah, so I got yeah, I had two uh, two cigars there that are, that are full of flavor bombs. So Amen. definitely, but the. Uh, We'll kick, we'll kick it off with the J.C. Newman, the American. Had a 7x47 Churchill. Uh, that's uh, retailing about 18 bucks to twenty two fifty wherever you're at in your market uh, region. Uh, that is uh, for the single. Uh, and they offer that in the Churchill, the Torpedo, the Toro, and the Robusto Vitolas. Uh, the filler on this one is, and this is a, a you know, getting it from uh, Drew, uh, J.C. Newman, uh, a full on American cigar. So this one's a filler, uh, Connecticut Havana seed, uh, from Pennsylvania Mennonite. Uh, the binder is a uh, Connecticut broadleaf, uh, the wrapper S, uh, F S G. So Florida, uh, Florida sun grown. Sorry. I'm trying to get my, uh, my initials, uh, memorized, uh, factory, uh, L, Leo, and that's in Tampa, Florida. So I may have butchered that up. It is handmade. The mm. body is medium. So, man, this cigar, no disappointment whatsoever. I mean, this is what I wanted. I was, when I looked at the cigar, looked at the label, and trust me, that label, I put it in my in my glass case already. Uh, the, uh, the band, because I am the band man. I love bands. Uh, so, uh, uh, right off to kick it off, uh, cedar, uh, cocoa, uh, and then, and this is just on the first, the first third, uh, cocoa flavors, cedar came through the molasses, the sweetness of the molasses. Oh man. It's just, it's definitely there, uh, for, uh, on the retro, uh, you get a lot of the leather, uh, to coincide with that and then transition back to the 
the cocoa for sure. Mm. Uh, a little bit, a little bit dark. It went, you know, I was between cocoa and dark chocolate, but I was more on the cocoa, I guess that day. Um, a uh, little tartiness from the, from a citrus. I, I couldn't really put my, my, my palate on it, but I definitely got that from this cigar. And then uh, on the second, uh, third, uh, started to get a little bit of the oak and leather really prominent. And, and, uh, and then, and then on the backside of that, uh, the, co- the, the cocoa came through again. So, man, this cigar, just the construction, the way it looked, the way it, the way it's presented, uh, out of the wrapper, man, it's just a beautiful, uh, work of art. I, I mean, uh, it, it, uh, the, the, the strength of it being a medium, uh, uh, it was one of the first ones that I didn't smoke that didn't have a, it didn't have a, like a lot of pepper or spice to it, but it, the Oak really, uh, at the end, man, that cigar, I wanted more. And that was a Churchill mm-hmm. and that's, that, that's rare for me. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, uh, my still geeks rate on the profit. I mean, it's not a cheap cigar. It's not a, uh, uh, a cigar, uh, that, um, uh, uh, it's one that you share with your friends. I mean, as far as a box split goes. How expensive? Uh, so, so you gave it a box split. This is yeah. Geek Train. How expensive is it? Because I've only had one experience with with the American, and I'll get to it. But how, yeah. what is it like? Seventeen, eighteen bucks more, more. Yeah, it's, it's like made in the U.S., bucks. so it's got to be over. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's eighteen bucks. <sighs> okay. Yeah. To twenty-two yep. to twenty-two fifty. Sure. My my survey because <laughs> I called a few cigar lounges throughout the United States and just asked them if they, you know, if they they had it or I got a list that had it and called them and asked them. And, uh, yeah, it's between 18 bucks and 2250 a stick. Yeah. 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 Yep. My only experience with JC Newman American was I was with Paul in Vegas and we're at Casa Fluente and I was like, Oh, cause it's not here. Although we have, Customers here from my rotation that do sell J.C. Newman products, it either hadn't got it here yet. It was just, what was it, launched in July? Is that, is that, is that, yeah, it was yes. launched in July, it hasn't gotten here yet, whatever. And I was in Vegas, uh, Casa Fuente with Paul. And I said, oh, this is the J.C. Newman American that is, is a sponsor for Story Geeks. Mm-hmm. And... Paul was on a mission, as he explained when he was on a couple episodes back, for the the Rosado Casa Fuente, and I was like, all right, like, yeah, and and I should have took it. I, I, it's one of those things, like, it was a blur, like, the whole trip was a blur. You're in Vegas, it's one of those things, like, I put it back and grabbed the Rosado, and then we went on with, with, with that and whatnot. So I was close, you I was close, close to, to getting but it, no but no cigar, I, uh, close but no cigar. And it's just one of those things, like, like, honestly, like, because I, because the funny thing is, like, I don't know, like, I don't know if, if you have when, when you travel or when you're in a situation where you're not thinking clearly for no other reason other than you're just in the moment, right? I'm at Casa Fuente, right? And so I had it, and I should have taken it because I took other cigars off the shelf for purchase, and yeah. I just put it back and just walked out the humidor because by then, Paul was already talking about the mojitos and how they're great, yeah. and I just freaking lost track, and then there you go. So yeah, I'm, squirrel. I'm still uh, that is Paul, right? I'm I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm still trying to 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 get to that smoke uh, there. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm going to an event uh, in, in in a week and a half that actually has them. So I'm I'm pretty pumped. There of course, they're not doing the event. They're not doing the event for that them that night. But you know me, I never smoked the event stick at the event. So there you go. So yeah, that. That's my American story. If it was riveting, great. If it wasn't, I apologize. <laughs> well, you went from you went you went to go get that other unicorn that Paul already had in his head. Because he, Paul put shit in my head. You know what I mean? It's like it's like it's like oh, you got him out of here. I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah. Oh, these are the open sacks. All right, cool. You know what I mean? Right. Are these the things? I remember being in the humidor. I'm like, are these the things that you would age for five years? Yes. So it's ready to smoke now. Yes, oh, it is ready to smoke. meets yeah, my buying criteria. I don't want to save it. I want to smoke it when and we smoke them and there you go. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> trust me, I, I've, I got I got four of them and the other ones are in my tucked away humidor. Oh, of course wife, they are. Yeah, right. No, nobody's allowed to go in there and even take a look see at it. Yeah, lock and key. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta, <laughs> gotta keep it on the lock and key. That's I'll tell right. you, man. I I. I am a fan of this brand. I've been a fan of this brand since I started this show. 
um, in pre-starting this show. I had what did I have? <laughs> I no, I want to. I, I know what I had. Where am I? I I had, I had the um, black label trading company Green Hornet, right. Uh, this is an extension uh, based on the uh, Killer B blend. Um, this stick here is available in two different sizes. I had multiples of both, so the review is 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 well vetted. Um, they have the Killer B four and a half by forty six, and they have um, the well in that same series is the Green Hornet. Which is the uh, five by forty-eight? I'm specifically um, talking uh, today about the Green Hornet, but let me tell you something. Uh, rapper is an Ecuadorian Maduro with Candela to, uh, up there. Before you grab this stick, take thirty-five to forty seconds, if not more, to look at the cap. The cap work of the Green Hornet Killer B series uh, is amazing, uh, for sure. But anyway, take some time and admire that construction. Okay, Story Geek Pod is done, right? Uh, the wrapper, like I said, Ecuadorian Maduro with Candela. The binder is a Nicaraguan, Hambar uh, Nicaraguan Habano. And the filler is from Nicaragua. It is a 5x48. They're calling that a Robusto. You get a super awesome grassy note in the beginning. Uh, from there, uh, it starts to fade, and it's replaced by a leather flavor with um, some 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 cocoa in there. Espresso, awesome stick. If you retrohale, you will get some of that pepper element uh, from that Nicaraguan tobacco that is 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 is, is very re uh, relevant when you're smoking Nicaraguan tobacco. Uh, for sure um, This I mean it, it has a really decent price point when you look them up uh, it is it, It's 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 um It's in that seven to eight dollar range sometimes nine depending as to where you are But the black label trading company green hornet. I give that absolutely positively a box worthy Very nice is that a triple? Is that a triple cap? Is that on the cap there? No, the cap has and in, in 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 there it has a almost like a bob pole, but it's not diagonal, right? I got you. So okay. it's 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 uh it's uh what is that horizontal? Yeah. So it's a horizontal yeah. um twirl of the candela and yes. the um regular Maduro wrapper. On the top there, and I mean, you just cut tip. I'm usually a bullet or a V guy, right? If if if, if the size warrants it, yeah. I actually with this, I just cut off like the tippity tip, right? Nice. And and, and make sure I have a drawer and whatnot. And and it's just it, the artwork is uh, on that tip. It's just is it's just amazing. Um, it, it's sweet. it's a it's a really it's a really sweet stick and All right. like I said for the price point you can totally enjoy it anywhere it's portable you can fish with it you can golf with it you can you know mow your lawn with it and you know <laughs> and as you're doing chores if you if you have a honeydew list on the weekend uh, at least you'll find a little bit of peace and happiness because you're smoking a really really tasty stick for sure nice nice I like that. My next cigar, uh, I, I went with the Vegas Five Limitada. So this is a 2019 release, six by fifty. It's a five dollar to six twenty five dollar stick. Yep. Uh, Rapper is Nicaraguan, uh, Dominican Republic uh, uh, is where it's, it's for, where it's from. The origin of it. Uh, the binder is Cameroon, uh, and the uh, Dominican uh, filler is Dominican and Nicaraguan. So brand five Vegas is the brand on these. Yep. Uh, the Limitada 2019 has been rolled into a 6x50 Toro size. Again, remember we were talking about sizes earlier. Yep. Popular sizes. Uh, and it starts with some seriously high-quality tobacco. I got this from their website. Uh, the high-priming blend of Nicaraguan and Dominican long fillers beneath the Cameroon wrapper. So that right there tells you, if you understand the construction, which I'm pretty sure most of our Stogie Geeks listeners do, uh, uh, 
and it's a delicious uh, Nicar- Nicaraguan wrapper uh, for sure. Uh, this is a medium full body flavors of oak, pepper, cedar, and espresso. Mm. And I'll tell you, at first light, man, I mean, the just the aromas, uh, I, I, I was like, okay, this is going to be a good one uh, for me. Um, and I, and again, I, I don't look at the price too much, but I was thinking, okay, this is going to be an okay cigar. Sure. But it actually, it actually took, it, it actually took me to a whole different level. Uh, the, the, the pepper definitely comes through at the beginning, a little bit of cedar uh, on the retro, uh, retro hell. You definitely get that, that, that really nice peppery, uh, uh, experience if mm-hmm. you're if you've been smoking cigars for a while, and and uh, the pepper I'm gonna say more on the uh, uh, probably more on the on the black black pepper a okay. uh, little bit straight there, uh, which gives it that that full body uh, flavor for sure. Uh, the cedar and, and the espresso and it just you know combined with the oak uh, throughout the entire uh, the second third and towards. Uh, the, the last third of it, I mean, I mean, it just stayed pretty consistent. The burn was good. Uh, the uh, uh, the flavors, uh, I, I didn't get any like you know, I wasn't disappointed at all uh, with the cigar throughout the uh, throughout my smoking uh, experience with it. I did give it a rating of a fiver mm-hmm. uh, because uh, I, I don't do a lot of lawn cutting. I have a gardener for that. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> As do uh, I, but go on. <laughs> <laughs> so when I, I guess when I'm washing uh, incognito, for those of you who, who, who follow me on Facebook, know that incognito is my is my truck. Uh, you know, so when I'm when I'm washing incognito, I, I definitely uh, you know I can do that chore as I'm smoking a cigar. Um, uh, I'm not worried about it getting damaged or what have you. But like I said, why would you want it to damage a cigar? I mean, it's a yeah. great cigar. Uh, you know, I, I uh, there. Uh, so this is my first experience with Vegas Five uh, brands right. altogether. Yeah, and I definitely will be checking out their other facings as well. Um, right. Let me ask you. Let me ask you a question because when you said that in your intro from our intro, when when, when you were burning through what you were going to uh, speak about, did you get that online or did you buy that in a shop? No, I bought this at a shop. See, so that's interesting. I, that's interesting yeah. because. They don't even play here in the Northeast. Yeah, like no, not like like in order for us to get our hands on that stuff, and I get obviously if you're a story geek, you subscribe to all the different websites and whatnot, and they always have Vegas Five promos that are online. <laughs> and and again, I'm not I'm not anti online. I do both, you know what I mean, and whatnot. But it's like it's 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 one of those situations where like I've never smoked it. Mm-hmm. And from my experience, is just because from a Northeast association, it's an online stick. So oh, yeah. fascinating that a a a a brick and mortar would bring that in. You know, oh, yeah. just fascinated, uh, not not fascinated because I've tried it and I don't like it. I've never tried it. I've heard about the brand. Spoke yeah. to the brand. I've reached out to the brand to come on in for an interview because I love to get the online perspective. Because from my perspective, they're 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 an online stick, so it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just to let you know, in a little, uh, uh, yeah, we we will be uh, actually talking with them. I I, I believe here in the next uh, six weeks. Good so. answer. See, perfect. Oh, yeah. Everybody likes you. <laughs> Everybody likes you. They'll be like, "Yeah, can you ask the questions instead of Joel? Is that bug?" <laughs> right? Oh uh, yeah. I had. I mean, fan of the brand. The wish they would get the distribution in order here in the Northeast. <laughs> I had the La Flora Dominicana Lenox. <laughs> Lenox stands for the night. If you're speaking the Spanish, night. right? <laughs> you must speak Spanish, Drew. You're, you're in you're in Texas, right? Uh, so since moving from California, my Spanish has now transitioned to Tex-Mex. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> right, there you go. So anyway, Lenox is the night. You know, just you know, <laughs> there. Uh, however, I smoked it in the day, right? But anyway, right? Lenox, this stick. Let me tell you. Um, Rapper is from Brazil. 
Um, the binder is Mexican San Andreas, which tells me it's going to be sweeter, right? Uh, there, and the filler is from Dominican Republic. Now, if you think about that combo, right? You have a filler from Dominican Republic. You have a binder is Mexican San Andreas, and your wrapper is from Brazil. Okay, uh, it's available in six and a half by fifty. That's the size. Super cool marketing. Uh, comes in uh, a, a tray. A tray. I say a tray because it's a circular um, box. It has ten sticks in there. Um, it's not super expensive. You're 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 talking maybe eleven ish a stick, right? So you're in that ten or whatever, eleven dollar plus whatever your tax rate is. Okay, sure. Um, what I was shocked about about this stick now i've had it before right uh in fact i do have an lfd story from the previous northeast lfd rep which uh if you want me to share it i will but anyway uh i do have a lenox specifically story about that when they first came out but anyway it's in the circular tray it comes out pile of 10 bing bang boom it's an ashtray a lot of people go crazy for for for, for the ashtray and whatnot. It's 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 a great piece. It's a great piece for a man cave if you have one and and stuff like that. But here's what I was shocked about then and now. You have Brazil, Mexican San Andreas, and Dominican Republic. So if you have Dominican Republic and Mexican San Andreas, you're naturally telling Joseph Ozempa, not stole your geeks. You're, you're telling Joseph Ozempa that that cigar should be pretty milder than my normal go-to palette for Nicaraguan stuff or some of the latest and greatest, whichever. And when I had that, I'm like, wow, this is really, really strong for a Dominican-Mexican San Andreas combination. You know? Awesome stick. You get some great pepper. You get some nuances in there, a little bit of cocoa. Uh, if you bullet cut it, I know it sounds weird because of the size, so you got to go easy. If you're if you're new to smoking, you bullet cut it very carefully and do that there. You do get some hints of leather in that stick. Uh, absolutely love that stick. Fan of the brand. Um, fan of that particular stick. Absolutely positively would. Uh, they're hard to come by here in the Northeast. So I'm I don't like sending crazy. the Stoey Geeks listeners on, on a wild goose chase. But, I mean, get the box. It's a box worthy, right? Get the box. Hang out. Throw it in your man cave. I don't know. Freaking play frisbee with the top. Whatever you want to do, right? You can play frisbee. Oh, yeah. And you can play frisbee with the top of the Lenox box for sure. So, hey, man, knock yourself out. For 110 bucks, box of 10, get yourself a box, play some frisbee, have a barbecue, take some pictures, post those on Story Geeks, tag us. It'd be awesome. There you go. There's my take on that. Nice. Do you want to hear my, do, do my Lenox story? Yeah, let's listen to that. <laughs> All right. So uh, Johnny Googs here, Northeast rep for La Florida Dominicana at the time. Since then, he has transferred to my my father's cigars. So full disclosure, right? There you go. That being said, I was like, I, I saw him in a cigar shop. I was like, dude, I tried that Lenox. Like, why can't anybody get more? He's like, well, you know, I, uh, this is the beginning of the of the distribution snafu. I call him. Uh, no, he's like, oh, dude, that's the guy's gonna put you on the map. My quote. He looks at me and he goes, bro, we're already on the map. I says, but you're not on my map. And that's the guy's gonna put you on my map. Because at the time, because at the time, I I full disclosure, I only liked the chisel. I didn't like the bigger stuff they were coming up, the triple a hero, quadruple a hero. I was like, you know, but but those are great smokes. I, I don't want to take away the cabinet L three hundred. I think it was or whatever. Super awesome stick. Like I didn't want to take away. But from my experience, because because LFD was so limited here in the Northeast, I'm like, bro, that's the guy's gonna put you on the map. And he's like, we're already on the map. <laughs> anyway, I, I just think it's funny because you know what's so funny? Uh, a couple weeks ago, he was at Havana Cigar Club next door, right? He, he was at the Havana Cigar Club next door. And I, I had uh, from my father the La Premiosa promise. It's the promise, right? 
if you translate it in English. And I, I, I looked at him. I said, bro, this is the guy who's going to put you on the map. He goes, get out of here, Jose. <laughs> <laughs> so that, there you go. There you go. That's my Lenox that's awesome. story. That's, that's my Lenox story. <laughs> hey, send me that top because my Frisbee golf uh, season is going to start kicking off here in uh, late October. Are you gonna you are you gonna bring a top of uh oh you don't have them? No, as I said, send me that top so I can use it on my uh, upcoming frisbee golf uh, Dude, season. It's a perfect frisbee. It's freaking wood, and it's circular <laughs> and it works. It totally works. <laughs> it totally. Or works. I can you or I can give it to my grandson and say, hey, this is what we used to use for slammers back in the day. <laughs> Oh yeah, dude. That's oh man, that's one of my favorites. Oh yeah. Now, John, oh. the, the listeners can't hear you, right? Okay, no, no, that's okay. No, the John, our producer now Johnny, can. our producer Johnny is having a disc golf <laughs> conversation in the middle of a stogie geek. This episode. is awesome. The disc golf is great. <laughs> there, there you go. Yeah, jo Johnny's super disc golf. He he's been asking me to disc golf since I've been here, right? For so call it call it two and a half years or whatever. And I'm like, dude, I want a real golf. I don't want a freaking disc golf. You know what I mean? Oh, dude, don't knock it till you try, Joe. <laughs> It's you know if for me it's like I take my uh, my experience at a shooting range to the frisbee golf course. There you so, go. oh yeah. So all right, I'm gonna get into my next. Wait thing. a minute, got... you don't wear Crocs, do you? Drew? No. All right, because I picture like Johnny. He's got like the socks and sandal thing going on. <laughs> you know, our producer Johnny's got the socks and sandal and shorts. Mocks mock our other producer. Like they wear shorts till like February first. Yeah. I'm like, dude, are you kidding me? Here, they wear shorts and sweatshirts and whatnot. But the studio no, does got, get We warm, got snakes but... on our course. You know, we got rattlesnakes. We got yeah, all yeah. kinds of different snakes. So I wear, I make sure I wear my snake boots when I'm when I'm frisbee golfing. <laughs> there you go. Now, now, uh, okay. <laughs> What's the stick you've been smoking? <laughs> so the next one is, uh, I kind of went in a different direction because nobody says I had to try one. He says, I know you don't like the the sweet over how do you say cigars that have all this flavor stuff fat on bottom betty's coming up i feel no this, no 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 this is the m bourbon by mecanudo really okay go for yeah, it i'm sorry yeah, yeah six by six by 50 toro uh this is available in uh a total of three different by the total is churchill robusto and the toro uh the rappers at ecuador connecticut uh the origin is nicaragua binders ecuador uh, filler is Dominican, and uh, the sweet is very intermittent in the cigar. It's a medium strength cigar. So this one had me like mystified because I'm like, I'm smoking a cigar, and I'm like, man, that brown sugar is just really coming through at the first third. And so I get into this, into the cigar, and I'm like, man, where have I tasted this flavor from? Well, it wasn't until later when I went and did some re more research on this cigar. It what it was, what I was tasting was my old fashions. I love old fashions. Mm. So if, if you guys go to my my Facebook page, uh, uh, Drew Galvin Prestige, or follow me on Instagram at uh, Drew Galvin Cigars, man, I'm I, I'm a drink connoisseur. I mean, uh, I, my wife and I went to this fabulous uh, Italian restaurant on on last Friday, and we had something called the Ring of Fire, and it was just like. And in the picture, it's awesome the way they bring you, they present the drink to you in a box with all this smoke in it. Anyways, going on from that. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, that's what it was. I was tasting that. Uh, and again, I mean, it's it's a it's a it's a M. It's called the M bourbon. So there, there you go. Uh, cherry uh, spice cherry. I mean, that was something like wow. Okay, I've tasted spice cherry yeah, and yeah. desserts and other things, but and and that threw me off. I mean, I mean, it didn't throw me off. It just kind of like wow. I can't believe I'm tasting this. So then I go through and I get a little citrus pill on the second, third. And then I get this, this other flavor and I really couldn't put my finger on it. And it's called horse hound. Anybody ever heard of horse hound? Joe? No, no, no. So, Please do, do tell. <laughs> do tell. So it comes from the, uh, it's like, uh, I guess it's along the lines of black licorice and uh, it's from the mint family. It's uh, it's a kind of a, a wiry kind of looking plant. Yeah. Uh, but that's, that's what it was. It was a horse sound. And, uh, and uh, yeah, people were like, what the heck are you smoking? Why? Because I'm what was the smoke like? potent like was it different or oh, oh yeah the aromas i mean everybody was like what is that i'm like well it's one of these uh m bourbons uh 
by Macanudo. Mm. Uh, and, and so, uh, uh, yeah, so that, that, that really filled the air with this order. And it, but it yep. was, it was, it was a great aroma. Yep. Yep. Uh, uh, the other, uh, the other to that, uh, like I said, was a citrus that was coming through and, uh, and that, that citrus is what was, that was throwing me off a little bit. I'm like, Oh shoot, I'm, I'm smoking a, uh, the old fashioned. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I, I definitely, uh, you know, going to that flavor cigar, uh, you know, and it's not because I think, you know, lesser unexperienced cigar smoker smoked that. It's, I mean, I was, I was actually surprised. I enjoyed that. Mm. Uh, I did rate it as a block, box split. I mean, I couldn't buy a box and, and, and enjoy them probably in a year uh, because there's too many other things out there to, to go venture off to. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I will box split this and, uh, uh, and, 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 and keep them in my humidors for those days where if I don't want to drink, uh, uh, because of uh, holidays or things of that nature, I'll, I'll just go smoke my old fashioned cigar. That's so, that's so it I, tastes like because because they saw they <laughs> sent us some here at Stogie Geeks, uh-huh. and I, I I mean we get tons of mail and and whatnot and and it's different because some of it is promotional stuff like okay we have an interview and we want to smoke they want to smoke on the show and they sent us some stuff and i'm just like and i never got to it so now i'm gonna have to get to it oh you know what i mean i never got to it because i had a mac duno it was like a coffee break or something like that it was coffee something and I was like, oh, hell no. You know what I mean? So so I had that first. And then I did, um, Paul and I actually spoke about this on the fly, as we do often during the week, because I'm in studio here every day. And and um, we talked about the diesel. He was talking about the, the hair of the dog. But and I was also talking about, like, the whiskey row. So so I kind of categorized them in, 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 that, in that kind of, profile and then when i had that coffee from that i was like i'm not even gonna get to the to, to the m bourbon i was like i'm i'm just not gonna get to it unless they macaduna ever returns my call and 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 wants to come on the show and and you know hopefully they can find skype or zoom because they're a very old company but anyway yeah i'm gonna one up, I'm gonna one up you on that one All right. i'm gonna one up you on that one so that's another one in our list that we're uh i'm working on right now oh yeah that, 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 that drew it's so great to have you because because <laughs> you know they've they, they're, they're probably sick of hearing from 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 joe zampa no you know no I mean? no and you know what that whiskey row we just got uh we just got that shipment in from uh ipcpr order we actually just got it today yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so yeah, Nomi was telling me, goes, I got another one for you to uh, to, yeah. to take home. And- so my reputation precedes me, Drew. Uh, uh, you you introduced me to Jonathan from Alec Bradley via email. Yes. So I reached yeah. out to him, and he left me a voicemail message. All right, yeah. he left me a voicemail message, and then he took it upon himself. This is why I like where this guy's going. He took it upon yeah. himself to look up Stogie Geeks. He goes, I know you. <laughs> I'm gonna go on the show with some other people as well. Yes. <laughs> so he booked an appointment today for a future interview and whatnot. He was like, "I know yeah. you." He wants to bring an army against me. Like he wants right. to bring. Because I was like, you know, because I'm. A, I told him, I said, "I'm gonna talk about a cigar that tingles my lips." What the hell are you guys doing? Right. So it's kind of funny, but you know, so um, they're probably happy. Um, I'm waiting for the emails to come in and say, "Yeah, we'll appear on Story Geese. Can Joe take the day off?" <laughs> I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting for that for, for that email to come through. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. That's when you know I'm doing my job because we're keeping them on their toes. That's the way it goes, right? Exactly. That's the way it goes. So you gave that a box split, but you would yeah. certainly go go through a box. Yeah, for me it's a box split uh, because, like I said, I, I I've still gotta uh, ease my way into these flavored cigars. I have people telling me about Java and yeah. and, and all these other other flavor bombs. Uh, later on, I'll do the f- uh, Fat Bottom Betty. Uh, yeah. Right the state. And and uh, but yeah, it's 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 something I'm I'm just now getting into. It's like the Lancero, you know. Uh, I shied away from that at first, but now I'm like, okay, I'm a Lancero whore uh, <laughs> in a good way. <laughs> many, m- many multiple shop owners know that I'm getting drunk in their establishment uh-huh. when I pull out a fat bottom Betty or an acid. 
And they're like, <laughs> there you go. You're going home in 45 minutes because you're drunk. <laughs> and then, they're like, they're like, dude, you you small. I'm like, dude. Like, I don't know, like, if I have a chance where, you know, a friend's driving me and I'm, we, we been to, like, say we went to a boxing fight and then we went to, well, you know, I parked my cigar, my, I parked my cigar, love it, parked my car and, like, I know I have safe passage and I'm going to go to the fights and I'm going to drink and we're going to smoke and then we're going to go to the cigar bar after the fights and then we're going to go to the our local place where we all can side and I'm, I got a ride. And I'm freaking rocking an acid. That's They're like, the dude, right. you are not you driving. You are. <laughs> but, but we'll get to that. Like, the, all of them know it. Like, across, across like, Havana, Churchill's, uh, the old joy. Well, the old joy's, which should, should soon be the new joy's or the, yeah. whatever he's going to place his new cigar name and whatnot. Like, like all those cigar shop owners know me. That when I'm like, yeah, can I get a Jewish state acid? They're like, dude. You're Most driving? I'm like, no. Like, yeah. Yeah. all right, you know. But yeah. So anyway, yeah. Because the flavored stuff, it, it's weird, right? It's a, it, it, it's a different. It's different. And believe it or not, sometimes when we're doing our profiles and everything, we really want something different. Sometimes it's not that different, but it is different. You know, for sure. For sure. I had, I had the Alec Bradley. Uh, Magic Toast. This is available in three different sizes. I had two of the three. I had the Robusto, five and a half by fifty-two. I had the Toro, six and a half by. I'm um, sorry, six by fifty-two. I did not try the Gordo, which is a uh, uh, six by sixty. Uh, the wrapper is from Honduras. The binder is from Honduras and Nicaragua. And so is the filler. Again, the Robusto, Oops, super cool, fan of that size in that stick. Uh, I think it loses a, 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 a little bit of the um, tastiness uh, for that. What I didn't like about this stick is when I first try it, I'm like, oh, boy. Like, here like we go. Said, here we go. And when you're sure. when you're past that like two inches through of there, so what the Robusto is five, so the last three inches, phenomenally enjoyable, excellent cigar, love it. Takes you a little while to get through. It's interesting because sometimes it's the other way, right? It it goes at the end. I don't like it, and uh, I'm, I'm at the end. I don't like it, and and whatnot. But it, it seemed a little bit newer tobacco. Uh, not aged appropriately for the selection that I had uh, from there. And as time progressed, I wasn't drinking so at the time, so I have a good assessment uh, of there. And uh, it, 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 I really got some, some super cool uh, nuances that, uh, that is classic Honduras, right? And a Honduras-Nicaraguan combination to me... Is a very smooth combo. I honestly feel that the Honduran tobacco, the the Honduran elements that are in there, uh, whether it be wrapper, binder, or filler, really dull down that classic Nicaraguan strongness. And especially if, and I'm not accusing anybody from anything, if the, that tobacco hasn't aged, you can really, if tobacco hasn't aged, and you smoke a Dominican cigar. You, it's very hard to say this is one years old, this is two years old, three years old. Nicaraguan, I feel you can totally tell. And some of the consumers and feedback from, from my network have have told me that. But awesome. Get a little bit of... Uh, I, v, I did a deep V by uh, Calibri. Oops, this side. Deep V by, uh, uh, by Calibri. And towards the end, I mean, it gets like a leather... It gets a smooth Nicaraguan because the, 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 the Honduran elements really kind of smooth it out. Um, I did get kind of an earthier or a nuttier taste from it uh, there. Uh, it's blended well, constructed well, awesome stick. I, I would probably give it a box split for sure. Um, you know, uh, price point's phenomenal. Uh, supposedly, uh, it's in it's in it's in regular production, and from what I can tell here on the northeast, it does very well with um sales. So that was the Alec Bradley Magic Toast Robusto. Uh, I gotta give me some of those. I I think we have some that just uh that just arrived. 
uh, earlier in the week, so I got to get me some of those. Yeah. And then full disclosure: this morning at ten thirty, when I had my conference call with Alec Bradley, uh, I told them uh, you got to ship us some of those original Tempest. That stick, the original Alec Bradley Tempest, is. I mean, we're talking from. Two thousand eleven, twelve. Say twelve, yeah, twelve. Yeah, yeah. two thousand eleven, twelve. Re- uh, phenomenal stick. Not the tempest That's a unicorn Maduro. for me. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. All day long, and yeah. I always say, whenever I have a chance to speak to an Alec Bradley rep or a Alec Bradley oh. person, like we're corporate, when we're dealing yeah, with yeah, down the stogie true. level, I'm like, yeah. why won't you bring that back that plant? Yeah, like what are you guys thinking? This guy is phenomenal, and I and I it, it, it built up a lot of hype. You know what I mean? And then they went off the deep end and got into their the black market. And I'm I'm the only black market I, I really like is the Candela version. I believe it's called the Filthy Hooligan. Off the top of my head, comes out yeah. around St. Patrick's Day and stuff like that. I'm fan, I'm a fan of that. But, um, you know, it's the black market plan wrapped in your magic toast, and then there you go, away it goes. But, uh, you know, um, that's my take on it. I, I, I think the magic toast is uh, good. And, and it's got a great price point for sure. Most definitely. My next one I'm going to get into is uh, something that just came across my my radar. It was a cult fourth day. So anything with fourth day, because I like the strong, I like strength in my cigars. I said, okay, I mean, it, it, nice, nice presentation. Uh, when I got it out of the box, uh, it was had a nice band on it. Uh, it has two bands on it, one at the foot and one, you know, of course, the uh, uh, the band uh, at the top. Uh, so this one was a Grand, Grand Toro, Grande Toro, 6 by 60 They also offer this uh this cigar and a Churchill, a Toro, and a Torpedo. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is so I from the uh, I went and did a little research. So this is a small boutique factory known for producing top-notch handmaids. As weird as Colt may sound, might sound, I assure you, it's as legit as they come. Uh, so I said, okay, well, you know, let me try this out. So this cigar is six seventy-five to eight twenty-five, depends on where you're at in the United States. That's where it's at. Plus. You know, your cap tax and all that good stuff. Uh, manufacturer was Takasa, South America. Uh, the origin is Nicaragua. Uh, strength is medium. Wrapper. So this is what also got me to the, to get this cigar in my in my in my uh, in this list this week. Uh, I love Habana, the Habana, uh, mm-hmm. Ecuadorian Habana wrapper. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's natural in color. Uh, the binder was Nicaragua, Nicaragua, uh, Otamape. Uh, I'm pretty sure I just butchered that one up. Uh, and then uh, the filler is Nicaragua uh, Jalapa. So, man, uh, again, uh, I started this cigar. I looked at, so I go through this. For you, so you, so you, who haven't uh, seen uh, a lot of me, uh, I go through this uh, trance. I look at the cigar, I spin it around, I look at the label, I fall in love with the label. Uh, I look at the construction, just look at the cap, and just before I cut it, and I use a Zycar uh, deep V cutter, and then I got like four other ones. So I got a straight cutter from uh, Calibri. Yep. Uh, uh, but yeah, great cigar. So I, I deep V cut this one. Uh, Does it work? Man, what's that? Does the straight cutter from Calibri work? <laughs> you know, uh, I still, I still, <laughs> <laughs> that's why Does, people yeah. listen to Stogie Geeks because of that question right there. Does it work? You know, <laughs> you know what? It, it, it does uh, when I do some straight cuts, and I'm very careful with this cutter because, man, I, I first got it, I would overcut it. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. yeah, so it has <laughs> it has no little plate on the back where it guides you. So I have to, yeah. It took me some practice to use it, but yep. I finally got it got it yep. to work very, uh, for me very well. Uh, the notes, uh, my taste notes on this one was man. At the beginning, it was a creaminess, uh, uh, deep, rich, nutty taste, man. Uh, uh, kind of almost like a, I want to say like a, almost like an almond butter. I guess uh, mm. is what I can bestly get that. So it had uh, like a little bit of sweetness into it. Yeah, but was it but sweetness? It was, uh, my question, and and please hold your thought. Was it sweetness uh-huh. on the tip from the wrapper, or was it sweetness from the smoke from the inhale? 
I didn't catch that last part. Was it sweetness from the tip of the from the tip of the wrapper or from the smoke on your palate? No, it was from the smoke on the palate. Okay, so cool. For sure. Yep. yep. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and then it got into a little uh, on the second third. It got into a little spiciness. Uh, uh, and then the aromas really started to kick in of earth and and and, and leather. Uh, very buttery uh, in the in the mix, and then on the retro, that's where you get some of the uh, the nutmeg. Uh, definitely was able keen on that real quick. Uh, the nutmeg, uh, red pepper for sure, because man, uh, that medium uh, it bordered between medium and full body for me, uh, and it it just it just stayed uh, uh, smooth, buttery smooth, and I I think it's that almond butter that I was tasting in the beginning, but this cigar, man. Uh, for being a six dollar, six seventy five stick to eight twenty five dollars, uh, eight dollar and twenty five dollar stick, man, uh, it, it surprised me uh, again because uh, I'm not familiar with the brand. Mm -hmm. But uh, I gave it a fiver. My Stone Geeks rating on that was a fiver. Uh, I would definitely get uh, buy some of these and put them in my humidor uh, because from what I went to the other sites that have experienced uh, these cigars, they said if you keeping your humidor for five months plus which i'm capable of doing and you're not that's true <laughs> uh the, they said that you get a you get a, a caramel so uh and 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 you get uh the ginger really comes through uh on the retro so uh i'm definitely going to go down that road with these and i'm still for five okay five can plus. you for the story geeks listeners that are listening via audio can you just repeat the name this, of the cigar again. Okay, it's Colt Forte gotcha. uh, is the name of the cigar. Uh, and I, as I said, they come in four different uh, Vitolas. Uh, so it's a Grande Toro 6x60 is the one I I smoke. Uh, there's a Churchill, a Toro, and a Torpedo. And it's a small, it's, it's, it's a, it's, it is a boutique uh, cigar. Right. I have, I have never heard of that cigar and yes um you purchased that in brick and mortar i got it through uh yeah i think i was in hico hico texas yeah and i got it from one of the cigar uh well they only have one out there it's a small town yep. <laughs> uh i want to say the wooden wooden indian is the place i got that from nice the wooden indian cigar wooden club indian. radio i did a whole a whole segment on wooden Indians. Oh yeah. Do you know why wooden Indians had started with with, with in front of smoke shops? Uh, I know some of it, but go ahead. Mark, you go. You go. What have you heard? Uh, well, I heard it was a. Uh, I heard several things. Well, one of the I guess one of the main things I heard was that it was a. Uh, Indian name or something with the name of the tobacco. Something like okay. That. Yep. That is um, pre v. That is post vehicle story. Okay. That's post vehicle pre automobiles. Pre automobiles. Okay. Pre automobiles. Cigar shops would have to put wooden Indians in front of them, uh -huh. so that they know where to stop, so that they could be taxed. Oh, really? Yes, sir. Oh, there you go. And that is wow. why you listen to the Story Geek Show again. This is, <laughs> right, right? So, so pre-automobiles. And, and I, if, if I go on my Google Drive, on, on my personal Google Drive, I have references and all that stuff. Like, it was actually where, because what happened is the, um, I want to say sheriff, but it's like a constable, right? Cause, which is what cops stands for, a constable on patrol, would go around and he would stop in front of all the Indians that had there and so that they know that they would have to be taxed and his job was to find them for the Indians and if you didn't have an Indian in front of your cigar shop you could be uh, tax, uh, accused of tax evasion oh wow okay cool. yeah man that's fun fact. fun fact there you go and yours was because of the name what the name Indian tobacco or because of the name of the actual wooden Indian yeah I'm sorry to catch that joke. No, yours was the name of well, when you elaborate in your fun fact uh, about wooden Indians. Is it because of the name of the tobacco that was from the Indian? 
Yeah, I believe okay. so. That's yep. that's that, that that's that's where I kind of did some uh, a little bit of yeah. Somebody somebody fed me that knowledge. Yeah, in <laughs> in, in in Cigar Club Radio, uh, I actually interviewed a historian because you got to remember, uh, unlike Stogie Geeks, that is distributed everywhere. Right. Um, I live in the Northeast, which is New England, which is extremely historic, right? Because it's so close to Washington, D.C. I actually interviewed a historian to give us the Wooden Indian story because that was the format there. And that was there. So, you know what I mean? And then they had the Wooden Indians so that they know where to be taxed. There you go. Government always has a way. That's right. You know what I mean? Maybe... Maybe Cigar Rights America could go back to Wooden Indians, and then you put the Wooden Indian in front of the show, and then you know how to regulate the tobacco and finally come to a conclusion. Just a thought. Anyway. There you go. That's a good idea. That's a, please. You know what I mean? I think they should have a statue of the Story Geeks logo in front of all of their shops, and then they would know where to stop for the, for the premium, whatever they're going to do. There you go. I like it. I like it. What do you got? What do you got I, next? I have one more. It tickled my tongue. It's I, I, I don't even know how to describe this thing. And you have one more too, right? Yes. Which should tickle your tongue if you have smoked it. So that that's crazy how we don't do the sticks until we actually show up for the show. And we both have sticks that could potentially tickle the story geeks listener's tongue. So do you want to go first or do you want me to? Yeah, go ahead. All right, I'll go first. Okay. I had... I don't even know what I had, right? This stick, <laughs> this stick here is the Las Tetons. I'm going in the way back machine. Las Tetons SS. SS stands for spicy sweet. Um, this is offered in a Robusto Toro and Churchill. The Robusto is five by fifty. Comes in a box of twenty-five. So does everything else. Box twenty-five. Your Toro is six by fifty. Your Churchill is. 7 by 50 um, I was on a call, conference call this morning with Alec Bradley who had acquired Laz Tetons and um, I'm a fan of Laz Tetons Where I told him I said, let me tell you about my first experience with Laz Tetons used to make his guys just have a little red band around them he goes, holy shit, you're old. That's what Jonathan said. I was like, dude, you're going to make a great episode of Story Geeks. Like, what? like, you know what I mean? He goes, he goes, like, you freaking know your shit. You know what I mean? I was like, dude, let me tell you something. Like, they used to have just a little band. It wasn't even in a square knot. Like, I was a Boy Scout back in the day. At least do it in a freaking square knot. It didn't even do it in a square knot. Right over left, left over right. They just square knot. Anyway, right? Didn't happen. There you go. He goes, holy shit. And I go, let me tell you about Los Tetons. Like, the guy's into everything. He has hot sauces, skateboards. As a as a I skateboarded vert, uh, I'm 44. I skateboarded until I was 37. So there's actually pictures on Facebook uh, when I was 37 years old, skateboarding vert and whatnot. So freaking loved it and all that stuff. But anyway, so I was into the Laz Tetons thing um, and, and this whole thing. And remember, when I owned the shop, this is pre-social media. We had a 56K modem. So, like, we didn't spend a lot of time on the internet, but when we did, like, people were super fixated on whoever they were fans of. And um, when I caught up, ironically, and and I told Jonathan this, too, uh, Drew, the day you emailed me the intro via email for Alec Bradley to come on the show, I had met with the local Alec Bradley rep at a gas station. You know what I mean? So it was like the same day, and he turns around and he goes, "Hey, he goes, he goes, are you still doing that story geeks thing?" I says, "Yeah." He goes, "How's the show going?" I says, "Are you watching it?" And he goes, "No." I says, "Then it's not going good." Right? <laughs> and he was like, "No, come on, seriously." I go, "I'm serious, right? I'm being the serious, you know." And then so he gave me, he gifted me, right? And he gifted me, you know. He's like, "You have your media pass for?" I'm like, "Yeah," because they get all freaking crazy about handing out cigars, right, and whatnot. And and it's so funny because that rep for Al- the Northeast Alec Bradley rep was uh, the person responsible for my, our previous episode. 
Story Geeks 306 when I was talking to Brenda about being a brand ambassador. At the time, he was working for Corporate yeah. Altidus. Yeah, and so uh, he made example. he allowed me to become a brand ambassador English, for Altidus. Yeah, so 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 that being said, like I've known this guy forever, right? Uh, his name is John. And so um, he, he gave me the Las Tetons uh, uh, Spicy Sweet. He also gave me, I don't know what it is. Is it in here? Yeah, it's in here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's in here. I don't know what it is. Oh, of course, when you're grabbing it, it prickles down, right? Hold on. He gave me another one, which I'll show the Story Geeks listener. Oh, this thing's acting up. All right, here we go. So, um, oh, I don't have it. So, anyway, on the band, I thought it was that, right? So, on the band, you don't know what it is until you peel it off and it says SS or whatever the things, which, which I'll get into for my elaborate group. So, anyway, so Lost Tetons is, uh, got acquired by Alec Bradley. Point of my story. They got acquired by Alec Bradley. Super pumped that Lost Tetons is still gigging with them. Right, because he's a musician and everything. He's, he's coming to the Northeast, so I'm going to that event. I already got a v uh, uh, into that event, trying to lock down Story Geeks with that they're, they're there. I got to figure that out. But yeah. however, they came out with uh, a series of sticks, and the SS is part of it. In regards to the series, you have a Grass, a Series D, an SS, a Sutton Place, a Steampunk, Fat Cigars, PHAT, and then there you go. With that being said, the SS stands for spicy sweet. It's a medium body, features a spicy sweet tip. Um, it's offered in 25 count, uh, bo 25 count boxes in the Robusto Toro of Churchill. As I said, I put this cigar in my mouth. Now, I didn't know what it was, right? Because I always, when I smoke a cigar like, like this here, right? Right with this here. I take off the band it, before I light it, cut it, bang, bang, boom, and, and away you go. I don't like bands on my cigars anyway. So I didn't know what it was. I took the band, put it aside, and then there you go. Oh, actually, I do have the band here. If, if you want a thousand right. pounds of, of... So what happens is... Hold on. Yeah. So, like, this... This ain't gonna work. This ain't... This SS spot is, like, covered when it rolls. You know what I mean? So you uh, yes. so so you just get like that version of that, and then when you pull it, it tells you what it is. It's the SS, right? Yeah, nice and shoot. so with that being said, with, with, with that being said, it's like I put it in my mouth. I V cut it, deep V Calibri, which is halfway broken anyway, right? So um, I, I deep V cleat it. I put it in my mouth and I light it, and I'm like. What the hell is that? Like, it's like hot sauce. Like, it's like, now, thank God I like hot sauce, right? And Why and and I rice? have no tolerance to spicy things. Uh, actually had a ghost pepper Bloody Mary in Maine at a juke joint. <laughs> Super cool idea. Yeah. Both yeah, the juke I, joint I, and I the Bloody Mary. That. But anyway, so, so I'm I, like... I'm like, oh my god! So then I I, I, I I was at my desk at work, and I'm like licking like this part of the cigar. I'm like... I'm like... <laughs> What the hell is it? Because I thought like something was wrong with me. Like I, it, it, it's so potent and it's so there and something's wrong with me. And I was like, okay. So then I'm like, what the hell am I smoking? So I start looking at the band. I'm like, SS. I'm like, okay, spicy sweet. And it and it's one of these sticks, man. It's not infused, so it's a. It, we were talking about that, and I don't want to steal off from 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 Jonathan's thunder about how they're made and whatnot. Super cool idea, and I'm like. All right, if it's gimmicky, sure. If it's not, you can be the judge. It's one of these sticks. You either like it or you don't. Once the sweetness dissipates, let's get into the stick, right? So I get into the stick, and I'm like, all right, cool. Um, you know, it, it, it's not even medium bodied. It, it, it's light bodied. It's there. It's total. Uh, it's it's just a unique stick. That That's really all I can say about it, right? Um I, I haven't had any of the other series of what they offer intrigued, I guess, right, um, there. And um, I'd give it a try one for sure. I mean, it doesn't suck because the actual tobacco is just a light tobacco, non-infused stick. But but it takes you a good 40, it's a 40-minute it's a smoke, so it takes you a good 20 minutes 
to have however they infuse it, and I know how they do it, but again, we'll, we'll talk about that on a future episode, of how they do it for it to dissipate. And it's funny because Jonathan said, yeah, he goes, you know, I was at an event, and some people smoke them halfway. Because they like the tip. I'm like, these be, yeah, whoa, where are you doing these? I'm just like, bro, you're talking like like you're giving the wrong guy ammunition to punch a stick. You know what I mean? But yeah, so it, 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 it was it was a cool stick. Anyway, definitely interesting. I want to try the other stuff because I would put that in my Joe's drunk category and not driving. Try ones. You know what I mean? But I would definitely... Um, this particular stick, I mean, if you want something completely different, like, that's gonna freaking, like, make your palate say, what the hell am I doing? This is a stick for you. I give it a try one. I mean, what the hell, right? You know? Try one. Or, well, yeah, try yeah, one. Try one. Maybe, maybe five or if you really like it, but I'd, I'd give it a try one. That's my final assessment. Right it's a try one. Yeah. I think I have a little bit of a placebo effect because I because I know the you actual know, the process. I spoke to Jonathan since point, then. But yeah, when yeah, I first yeah. smoked it, I'm like, no, no, what the hell is this right thing? You know? So anyway, that it was the Las Titans oh, yeah. SS, which stands for yeah. sweet and spicy. Grocery store. Oh man, I'm gonna have to get me my hands on one of those. It's rowdy. <laughs> it's just a rowdy stick. Like you know what I mean? It's like it's like it's like juke joint meets cigars. You know when you go to a juke joint, you have one vodka, one bourbon, two wines, white or red. Those are your only choices. Four beers. Like you know what I mean? And 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 it's like juke joint meets cigar. And I guess there's a calling for it. Because yeah. Alec Bradley acquired them, and there you go. I don't know. Heck if I know. We're going to get into the business functionality on October 11th on that. So there you go. <laughs> so my last stick I got is from Drew Estate. It's a fat bottom daddy. So yes. I always think of the Queen song. Yes. Uh, you know, fat bottom <laughs> girls, they make the rocking world go around. I, I actually <laughs> like that stick. It's it's from their, their Deadwood gig. You know what I mean? Yes, their yep. Deadwood. Exactly. Yeah, so this one here, I mean, I I, I, I uh I, I smelled some I smelt it here in our lounge. I'm like, what is that smell? You know, it's, it's very <laughs> it's, it's very aromatic. I mean it, it I was like, you know, but then uh the person uh that I knew who was smoke, uh enjoying that cigar at the time. She said, oh, you got to try one. She goes, it's not just a woman's cigar. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so, Fat Bottom Betty, uh, here we go. 5x54 uh, Robusto. Uh, $6 to seven twenty five stick. So, uh, this uh, this stick is uh, Nicaraguan. Uh, strength is medium. Wrappers USA, uh, Connecticut Broadleaf. Uh, wrapper colors Maduro. And uh, the binder Nicaragua filler Nicaragua, so you know right away for me when I when I when I looked at the cigar and just kind of did my 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 routine with it, uh, you know it, it it's really nice, uh, looks nice, constructs nice, uh, but man when I lit it up, man that thing is very aromatic, and so. Took the first hit, uh, took the first draw, excuse me, hit. <laughs> draw. Uh, yeah, I really, uh, man, the vanilla really came through on that. And and then from there, it just went to like uh, a very sweet, I, I'm going to say like a sweet tea. And uh, it was just very sweet, uh, very, uh, a lot of vanilla in there. Uh, uh, again, brown sugar. Uh, but man, this, this, this cigar... I smoked this cigar in, I'm going to say, 45 minutes. Yeah. And I, and I take my time with these cigars. But this one here was just, it just, it burned easily. It did not go out on me. Well, not once. Uh, it didn't run. Uh, you know, you know some, some, some of these cigars, flavor cigars that I've seen, they'll sometimes run on one side versus the other. Um, and, and so definitely the construction was great with this one. Um, but like I said, it's, it's just a very, uh, sweet, aromatic cigar. And, uh, for me, I mean, the price point on that for a box and they come in a 10 count box, it is a box worthy cigar. Um, I would definitely buy this for my guests, uh, myself, uh, introduce it to someone who is getting into the cigar, uh, culture or hobby. And I would definitely introduce them to this cigar. Um, they also, like you said, they, they have a Deadwood series, so there's a different other facings that they have that are in this line. Uh, some get in more pepper, uh, 
but yeah, uh, this cigar here was just really uh, for me aromatic, and it just it, it uh, flavor bomb uh, is another word to use on this one. Yeah, uh, I try to retro inhale it. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> and uh, it, 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 I struggle with it a little bit, uh, only because there was just so much smoke. I mean, there's a it's, it's, it plumes quite a bit. Yep. So, so it's it's uh, uh, when I was smoking it, I think uh, my because I was in my patio when I was smoking it. My wife is like, "What are you burning sage out here?" I'm like, no. <laughs> I love it, dude. You 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 are like teeing me up to wait for you to finish to like fucking go off on that stick. I love it. Go yeah. for it. Yep. But yeah, I mean, this stick, uh, yeah, it'll be one that I, I would just have. I mean, just like, like I said, for price, price point, yep. uh, it's an introductory cigar for, for people who don't smoke, but they like the aroma. I got I got friends from all over the world, and, and when they come by or when they are here in the lounge, uh, they, they, they like that really sweet, you know, stick. And so, yeah, this is one I'll definitely point in their direction. Uh, for me, uh, you know, personally, uh, I, I'd, I'd revisit this stick, uh, probably once, maybe once, maybe once in a blue moon. <laughs> yeah. 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 And that's, uh, but again, that's, uh, but there's no, I mean, this stick is a great stick. I, I drew a state on this one. Uh, uh, and I, I've smoked their other facings that they have, you know, and, and, but this is one that I can definitely, uh, uh, do this on occasion yeah sure sure i like yeah. i said i i toggle between fat bottom betty and drew estate acid and it's yeah. usually i've had like a four or five stick day we've golfed we've done this we've done that went to an event had a crazy guy day i guess you could categorize it as and i know i have safe passage and i'm drinking it to me it's a beautiful I got 45 minutes left socially. Yeah. Let me hang and let me not get into anything that's going to be too harsh and whatnot. And what they exactly. there. One yeah. of the things I've yeah. noticed about that series, like the Drew Estate and, and, and Deadwood, they smoke super fast. You brought up a great point. You know, even when I was talking about that. When we were doing a prequel to that stick, I was talking about, you know, I got 45 minutes left. I even said it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I got 45 minutes left. And and it's just like, you know, it is what it is. Let's talk about the business aspect of that stick. If you're entering into cigars or if you're... Um, want that sweetness of cigars, which I think some of us probably start there. Like I've even said yeah. on the show, I started with with Cherry Middletons, was the first cigar I had. You know what I mean? And then and then I like like start searching for cigars, not online. You know, I've been doing it for a while and all that stuff. You're like, oh wow, there's a premium thing. So the, you mean to tell me that these are machine? Then there's different. And then I start educating myself and all of that stuff. And and I'm like, all right, I'm like, you know. Why Wow, like, you know, the, let me expand my palate, and I did, you know, and uh, it, it's great for an entry level, it's great for the occasion that you mentioned, the party, you know what I mean, like, like you know, you got some people trying to get into cigars and all of that type stuff, for sure, so, yeah. yeah. no, it's definitely, I, yeah. like I said, I, you know, this is something that uh, a lot of our customers, when they come in, uh, yeah, they'll, uh, don't be telling me, because with this, this cigar, I mean, he, he goes through boxes. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, there's no question. Uh, All the 30 uh, of my panel who I speak okay. through, they, they they burn through that in Liga. That in Liga. Oh, yeah. And the funny oh, thing Liga. is, honestly, yeah. if, 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 your catech, if you were to put your customers in line, your retail customers in line, different retail customers, right? Here's the bottom line. It's all Drew Estate. You all yeah. pushing sticks. You all moving sticks. You all making money. I mean, you know that yeah. that's the bottom line for sure. You yeah, know? and definitely. And this line too. I you know when I talk to other people who are getting into the hobby, I just tell them I said this is a great line to get into and transition into the like the Liga Nine and things of that nature. Yeah, and get into the more exclusive sticks that they make. Yeah, uh, that they that they uh, have. And um, yeah, this is a perfect line. Uh, for them the other one of course perdomo you know they yep. you know it's another line that I, I like to you know tell people or share with uh people that are getting into this hobby you know start here and then build your way up yeah. uh and then uh but yeah uh I, I i definitely point them in that direction yeah yeah definitely and 
the and and you being a label geek, as you said, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the the artwork that 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 Drew Estate does on most of this stuff is is pretty cool. It's, it's super cool. cool. Yeah, my wife, I, I got the box from my wife. I she I brought her a box, and she's like, "What is that?" I go, oh, "That's a box. I think you'll like." She looked at it. She goes, "Oh, okay. This will go uh, part of her." Uh, What's that? Day of the Dead decoration. Dallas del Mortes. That's uh, November second. Yes, yes. It's November second. So, yes. Yeah. Dia de los Muertos. Yeah. 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 Dia so, de los Muertos. Thank you, Johnny. Right. Johnny's the only <laughs> sober one. Drew, what have you been drinking? Have you? I saw you sipping on some stuff. Is that coffee? Uh, no, this is a uh, Texas staple, Dr Pepper, buddy. No, I love Dr Pepper. I love Dr Pepper. <laughs> 23 flavors come on i have a dr pepper story too um growing up on military bases uh we they would never have coca pepsi it was always like uh uh no name brands and whatnot so we never had dr pepper as a kid we had mr pip <laughs> i felt i felt bad for you man <laughs> you know well, but, uh, <laughs> yeah between between that I, i've been on a dr pepper and a root beer kick lately really uh with, with, with my cigars, just because I read uh, yes. in some of the other periodicals about some of the root beer. I mean, I, I'm talking about real root beer, not like, yep. yeah. you know, and, and just uh, so I've been going down to the to the uh, wines and more or wherever and, and just seeking out root beer uh, sodas yeah. uh, that are made with pure cane sugar, because that is a big difference when you're pairing these with some of the cigars, the heavier, heavy yep. body cigars that I smoke. Uh, but yeah, when it comes to like the sweet bottom Betty, I had, I had a bottle of water with me <laughs> to, to knock down that sweet. See, I, I would be drunk. So I'd be having whatever I'm having that night. <laughs> it, would be like, it doesn't matter at that point. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter. Uh, what cigar did you smoke today on, on today's episode? Uh, so today I had the dogma by Drew Estate. Oh yeah. So yeah. So I got this and I'll be reviewing that here, uh, this coming up week. Uh, or put it in my library. Um, but yeah, very good cigar. A, it's a box press, uh, Toro. And, uh, man, uh, that's one that I can't wait to finish a review on this one. That's awesome. And, that's yeah. awesome. Story Geeks listeners, we have, uh, some interesting interviews coming up. Um, uh, Cigars and Spirits, Alec Bradley, uh, Cigars for Warriors, uh, Corporate Placencia. Uh, is coming. Can't wait to get Nessa Placencia back. And we're also going to be talking to their marketing person, too. Interestingly enough, that is going to be a fascinating conversation because, um, as some of you might or might not know, that uh, some cigars come totally out of the Placencia factory uh, there. So, um, yeah. <laughs> interestingly, it's going to be a super cool uh, fourth so, quarter uh, for Stogie Geeks and, uh, yeah. and 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 uh, a crazy roller coaster <laughs> ride for 2020. But anyway, Pacenti cigars, cigars is one of the most leading growers of first class tobacco, as they have been pioneers in the industry since 1865. Five generations of the Placencia family have continued in the legacy with using Nicaraguan and Honduran tobaccos today. The Placencia family's very own cigar line, led by Nesta Placencia, produces over 40 million handmade cigars each year. Placencia Cigars celebrates their Nicaraguan roots through their premium Alma series. Check it out for sure. Uh, ex uh, inclusive of the complex blend of the Alma Forte. I've had that yesterday. That is an amazing stick. We're going to dig day. deeper into that. For sure. The Alma del Campo, um, if you can find it, go for it, right? And their newest release, the Alma del Fuego, which I suggest you try to get your hands on some. <laughs> Each harvested in the pure soils of Nicaragua. So you definitely want to check them out. You can go to storygeeks.com, click on the Nestor, pl click on the Placencia banner. To find a retailer near you, and that being said, Drew, any final comments? Uh, just a shameless plug. We have all of those Placencia cigars that are available at Proceed Cigars and Tobacco here in Bedford, Texas. Yep. Uh, yeah, we love Placencia here. Uh, Nestor has done a great job with this product. Uh, uh, I believe the sons, uh, from what I understand, uh, are involved with this. With, yes. With him. Yep. 
since since so yeah uh, it's one of our uh we had the ufc fight nights here on saturday nights we're part of the johan uh productions so we're licensed to show the uh, ufc fights here and with their with their seat purchase uh they get a either a placencia or a or a, a jc newman I'm, hell yeah i'm in the wrong so, region Oh yeah, buddy. UFC <laughs> fights, UFC fights in Placencia. I'm in the wrong region, that's for sure. Um, yeah. Takeaway from my Nessa Placencia video, he was actually talking about his children. And uh, for you Story Geeks listeners, you can go to sto- uh, StoryGeeks.com, go in the search function. It's on the right hand side of the website. Type in Nessa Placencia, the video will come up. He actually spoke, Drew. About it's funny because his kids were in school at the time, and he talked about like you know they t- came back home and they said they want to say, "Dad, we want to do what you do," but he made him go to school. Yes, and you know something? It's like you know here we are interviewing <laughs> Nessa Placencia, and we're talking about like you know like he made him go to school, and I think that that's that's super cool. You know what I mean? That's the future. I mean, that's the future. Even with uh, the likeness of Perdomo and, the, and his son, you know, taking over, and everybody else. I mean, it's great to see that the generations are continuing uh, the success of their predecessors, and and not to say that anybody's stepping back from their present post, but it's very nice to see that it's transitioning down the lineage for sure. And given this current state of the economy, this is my final thought. If your family has a 50 year head start in a business, pay attention to that business, get a degree in economics, and get in on that action. <laughs> <laughs> that Most being definitely. said, Story Geeks, we'll see you next week. Drew, thank you for your commentary and your support and for being on the show. We will see you next week. 